Welcome to our review on pyramids of biomass. Now the first thing we're actually going to do is have a look at a different type of pyramid called the pyramid of numbers. Now the key thing about the pyramid of numbers is that the length of the bar that you draw is representative of the number of organisms in a given trophic level. One of the key things to remember about this is because it's all to do with the number of organisms, these pyramids aren't always going to be pyramid shaped. So sometimes they'll look like the one on the left because we've got more clovers than snails, more snails than thrushes, and more thrushes than sparrowhawks. But you can see the diagram on the right shows us we've got a single oak tree. So that's a very narrow bar. But living on that one oak tree are many insects and then there's fewer woodpeckers that feed off those. So what we can see here is that not all pyramids of numbers are pyramid shaped. The second type of pyramid is the pyramid of biomass. So if you remember when we talk about biomass, it's the amount of living material that's present. So even if we're talking about a single tree, the biomass is gonna be very different. So on the left, we've got a giant sequoia, which has a huge biomass in comparison to the bonsai tree on the right. Our second type of pyramid is the pyramid of biomass. Now the key thing to remember about these, they are always pyramid shaped because what they're doing is they're taking into consideration not only the number of them, but also the organism size. Because remember, biomass is the amount of living material and therefore a pyramid of biomass is looking at the amount of living material in each trophic level. So these will always be pyramid shaped. Now the way we draw them is the same as the way we draw a pyramid of numbers with the length of the bar representing the actual amount, either the numbers or the biomass, depending on which pyramid we're drawing. We also need to make sure that we've got our producer at the very bottom of our pyramid, then the primary consumer goes on top of that, and then the secondary consumer and so on. If they ask you to draw one of these in the exam, then they will give you a piece of graph paper to do it on. So pick an appropriate scale, work out how long each bar will be, producers at the bottom, and then stack them up. Just remember the last thing to do is to label each of the bars with the name of the organism it represents. For us to be able to draw one of these pyramids of biomass, then we actually need to know what the biomass is. So in order to do this, the first thing we've got to do is take samples from each trophic level. We then work out the average mass of the organisms from each trophic level, and then multiply that by the population size. And that will give us our total biomass that we can use to draw our pyramid. One thing we should remember though, is that when we're talking about the mass, we use what's called the dry mass. This just means that we've removed the water. And the reason that we do that is because if we're talking about living things with water in them, then depending on if they've just had a drink, if they're dehydrated, etc., the water content can vary and therefore it would affect the mass of the organism at different points in the day even. The downside to working out the dry mass though, as you may have worked out, is if we're removing all of the water from a living thing, it's not really going to be so living anymore. So we have to kill it and dry it in order to work out the dry mass. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now talk about what a pyramid of numbers is, what a pyramid of biomass is. You can draw pyramids of numbers and biomass, and you can also explain how we calculate the biomass.